So on page 260, you see this chart right here. We recognize that a quadratic equation only has three possible things that can happen. You can have uh, one real solution. If your quadratic equation comes down and just barely touches the x-axis, it'll have one solution. If your quadratic comes and touches the x-axis in two places, then you will have two solutions to that equation. And it's possible that your quadratic could never touch the x-axis, in which case we'll have no solution. All right? So where are the actual solutions? Well, the solutions are, where are they? Okay, it's where it touches. It's exactly where it touches. So that is the solution. That is the one solution. These two are the solutions. It's those x-coordinates. x equals something. And, of course, this one right here, the solution doesn't exist, does it? Okay? So that should be old for you. I hope you remember that from your Math 1 course. Okay? Um, that shouldn't be too new for you. I do want to make sure, though, that you understand some vocabulary. It's interchangeable. You'll see this vocabulary a lot. If your directions say solve, then inevitably somewhere in the response you're going to use the word solution. A solution is the answer to a solved problem. Solve means find the solution, okay? But there are multiple words that mean solution. So when you see the word solve, you know, you might be thinking different things. All of those are solutions. You can see it says one solution, two solutions, no solutions. Well, they're also what you call your x-intercepts, aren't they? So anytime I'm looking at a graph and I see x-intercepts, I know that they want the solution. The x-intercept is the solution to that equation. <coughs> Question. Many times they're also called roots. Okay? And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a couple weeks when we get into polynomials, but definitely in your Math 3 class and in your pre-calculus and that kind of stuff up above us when you're really involved with polynomials, they'll quit calling them solutions and they'll start calling them roots, the roots of the equation. Okay? The roots of the equation. Well, all the roots are are the exact same thing as x-intercepts, which means they're solutions. Okay? So they're the same thing. And a fourth word that you'll see come up a lot um, besides solutions and intercepts and roots is... Uh, what your calculator calls them, zeros, okay? They're really, all of those words mean the same thing. These are all synonyms, okay? If I say solve, then you can tell me the x-intercept of the equation, or you could tell me the roots of the equation, or you could tell me the solution to the equation. They are all exactly the same. Math people just use those specific words for specific circumstances, all right? When we talk about solutions, we're normally talking about equations. When we talk about roots, we're normally talking about polynomial functions. When we talk about zeros, same thing. When we talk about x-intercepts, we're normally looking at a graph. It's just kind of the situation that you're in. But the reality is they're the same. All right. Let's look at these four graphs that are right here and see if we can determine how many solutions there are. Look at the first one in the upper left. How many solutions do you think there are? Two. Can you name the solutions? All right. X equals zero. X equals two. And you can see them right there. What about the one on the upper right? How many solutions? Two. Two. And what are they? Negative two. X equals negative two and X equals zero. And you can see them clearly right there. And what about this one on the bottom left? One. Appears to be only one. Kind of hard to tell. We'd have to really zoom in to, to be certain. But it looks like there's one. And what is that solution? Negative one. It is negative one. And what about this guy over here? No. Okay, there are no solutions. And I know most of you know some shortcut ways of writing no solution. <laughs> I had like three of you show me how to do it with your fingers in the air, like your finger drawn. Zero with a slash, right? Okay, zero with a slash. Or you might be unfamiliar with this one, but from here on out you might see it more often. You know with domain and range, I put stuff in braces, right? So I've got the braces right here, 
and then I would list all of the domain and I would list all the range. So normally there's numbers and then another brace. Well, if I do two braces like this, what's inside these braces? Nothing. Nothing. It's empty. This is called the empty set. And sometimes people use the empty set to mean no solution. Okay? That's just something to kind of look for in case you see it on a weird math problem, SAT, PSAT, that kind of stuff. All right? We probably won't use it much at all, but maybe when you get up into pre-calculus, you'll see it a little bit more. Questions? All right, so someone said put the 4 on the other side. I agree. We're going to have to put the 4 on the other side. Get rid of that. It'll give us x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. How come that's the way I want to graph this? All right. Okay. <laughs> I forgot all you guys aced math 1, right? So you all know lots of different ways y'all could go through this. I just want to graph it today. I just want to use graphing. I'm trying to make sure you guys are super familiar with graphing by hand. Because remember, you can't always use that calculator. So graphing by hand, I want to graph this thing. Um, what do I need to graph it? Okay, I got the y-intercept right there. And now I need the axis of symmetry. All right. So I am going to force you guys to kind of do it the long way. That's going to be negative, negative 4 over 2 times 1. Positive 4 over 2 is 2. So x equals 2. All right. Um, plug that in, and that will give me the vertex, right? It's going to be 2. And now I need to plug that in. So I've got 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 4. What's all that give me? It's 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Is it 0? It's going to be 0, right? All right. So I'm going to graph this thing. All right, that's not exactly straight. Sorry. I have to call it close enough, though. Um, so I'm going to graph it. Vertex at 2, 0. Doesn't want to do it for me. Vertex at 2, 0. Y-intercept was at 4. Use your law of symmetry there. Get another point. And you end up with something like this. Is that right? Hopefully yours is neater than mine. Yes, ma'am. Above the 2? Yeah. You're talking about this guy? It's 2 squared. I was plugging it back into this equation up top. So that's 2 squared here minus 4 times 2 plus 4. That's just plugging in the equation. That's what gave me the 0 right here. Um, anyways, the whole point of that, remember, was to solve by graphing. So how many solutions are there? There is one solution. There appears to be one solution. And what is it? X equals 2. So definitely solvable by graphing. Here we've got, um, we're supposed to use a quadratic equation to find two numbers with a sum of 1 and a product of negative 6. Now, they don't give us the two numbers, right? So that's going to be our two variables. That's going to be an x and a y. Now tell me what sum means. Um, what do you, sum means, say that again? Solution to what? Addition, yeah, it's addition. So I've got x plus y, right? You're right. x plus y equals 1. That's the sum of 1, right? Now, what about the product of negative 6? Okay, that's going to be x times y equals negative 6. This should look familiar, but maybe a little unfamiliar to you math 1 people, all right? You did a ton of this last year. You did probably about a month's worth, to tell you the truth. All right? You've got two equations. What do you call it when you have two equations? Yeah, it's a system. Oh, why does everybody groan when you hear the word system? I don't understand that. All right, so we've got a system of equation. Now, last year we learned at least three ways of dealing with them, graphing and uh, substitution and... Elimination, all right? 
I want to look at graph for a minute, but I'm not going to do it here. All right? All right. Substitution it is. Choose one of the equations, the first one. Choose the first equation and solve for x or y. Probably solve for y. What is it going to be? y equals negative x plus 1. We did that, right? Okay. Take that negative um, x plus 1, just that part, and plug it in. Okay, that's called substitution, right? Oh, I remember it now. But when you did it last year, you never had to deal with nonlinear terms. So this is going to be x times, now I've got negative x plus 1, and it has to equal negative 6. So I put a dot in a parentheses. That was kind of worthless. Here we go. What would you intuitively do now with these parentheses? Yeah, that's what I would do. I would distribute there. So we'll distribute those. And we're going to get negative x squared plus x equals negative 6. Is it quadratic now? Okay, so remember the direction said use a quadratic equation? It is quadratic, isn't it? All right, so solve it. Solve it. What do you do with this guy? Yeah, okay, get rid of him. So add the 6 to both sides. We've got negative x squared plus x plus 6 equals 0. Are we ready to graph this? Should be pretty close to graphing it, right? Uh, the intercept is at 6. That's my y-intercept. I need the axis um, of symmetry. So that's going to be x equals negative b, which is 1, divided by 2 times negative 1. So that's going to give me positive 1 half. Is that right? Okay. And when I have positive 1 half and you plug it back in, shoo, see this one didn't end up any easier. I swear this was going to be easier, but it's not. All right. Um, I plug that back in to my equation. Negative a half. I made a half squared. Boy, I'm still going to end up with something ugly. All right. Well, it's good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is we already know the answer because we graphed it on a calculator. Uh, the bad news is this would be really ugly to keep going here, and I don't really want to do it. So we're going to stop right now. Um, and we're going to know that I could actually put this on my calculator. And when I do put it on my calculator, if I put, which formula? If I put, let's see. If I put this equation right here in my calculator, I'll get a graph that looks something like 6, and it's negative, so it faces down, and the axis is positive. It looks something like this. And we already know the answers are, I forgot them, negative 2 and positive 3, right? So the good news is that part's done. The bad news is that one would have been a bear to graph.